Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. In this episode we're starting off with our texture painting so I'll talk about the texture painting setup and I'll talk a lot about island margins or edge padding as it's known in other programs and the difficulties you might get with seams in game engines so it might be a bit long but it will be nice and detailed. Check the links in the description for more educational content such as this. Also there's a texture painting playlist so if you're having any difficulty with this then check out that playlist there's lots of answers in there as well. The reference image for this model and the model itself, unpainted that is, is available again follow the links in the description. Okay so here's where we got up to last time and we want to create a texture for our blunderbuss so we can paint on it. So in my UV editing workspace I've got the shader editor up here. If you haven't got that then click right on the corner and drag down and you'll get a new window and you can change it. To get rid of them you right click in between them and join areas and use that arrow. One of the most complicated things in Blender for beginners. So we need to put a texture here plugged into the base color and we'll be painting onto that texture. Now there's a few ways to do this. I'll show you the slightly longer way only by a couple of clicks but it will explain what's going on a bit more. So if I press new texture here in the UV image editor I can give my image some details. So blunderbuss color now I'm going to change the size of my texture to 2048 by 2048. So basically 2K. Now the reason I'm choosing this number is because it's easier to paint on, you'll get less pixelation, and you can always reduce it later on. But that can actually cause slight issues when it comes to bringing this into a game engine. 2K is a big texture size for such a small asset, so that would take up computing power, which we don't want, so you would want to reduce it. If you reduce the textures down, then you might get some bleed between the islands, which I'll talk about in a moment. But it's always best to paint on something that's quite high resolution and reduce it down because of the ease of painting. For the color, it's always a good idea to have a base color or a starting color that's one of the colors within your model. So I'll just go for a sort of mid gray, which can be close to one of the metals. We don't want the alpha channel because there's no transparency in it, and we can now click OK. And you can see instantly it's come into this screen here. It's made the whole area bigger, so if I zoom out a bit you can see it all and it's covered it in grey. But we haven't got it in our shader editor so we can't paint on it yet. So if I press shift A here to add texture, image texture, I can then bring my image texture in if I zoom in on this and click on the down arrow just here. I've got the blunderbuss colour there. Make sure that's plugged in. Your model should turn grey as long as you've got it on material preview mode over here. And we're ready for painting. So I'll go across to the texture painting workspace. And what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to bring down a window as well and change it to the shader editor again. I'll press N to get rid of this panel. And we've got pretty much the same looking workspace, except we're in texture paint mode, so we've got the texturing tools down here. But also we're in paint mode over here. So there is the UV editor and the image editor, so they're slightly different. If I go to the UV editor, that would bring up the UVs, as long as I was in edit mode. Let's go to edit mode quickly, and you can see the UVs there but it is different when you're in the image editor, you'll just see the image and a gray outline of the UVs. And when I go to texture paint mode, you can still see that gray outline, but you can't edit them in any way. So those are the slight differences. So that's the slightly longer approach of doing it, where you add a texture up here. In this case, we've got an image in here, so you'd actually press new image. And then we manually kind of bring it in to the shader editor. The quicker way of setting up images to paint on, if you're in the texture painting workspace, you can come across to here, and add a paint slot. And if I choose base color here, I get the same options. I call this test color two. And I won't change any of the details. I'll just press OK. And you can see it's instantly brought it in to my shader editor. And if there wasn't one plugged in already, it would plug it in for me. One other important thing that's worth noting is that it's brought it in up here as well. So I've got blunderbuss color here and test color two there. And can you see when I change them, it changes over here to the active object when it's white and it should actually change the blunderbuss color and change that to white. And the important thing here is that if I change between the two we know exactly what I'm painting on. You don't want to paint on the wrong texture if you've got lots of textures in here. To double check this I would suggest clicking on that texture within the shader editor as well. But I don't need that anymore so I'll delete that. Notice it doesn't delete from here. This should show you all the textures you have in your shader editor on this particular material anyway and it's showing too. Well, if I go away from this into layout mode, back into texture paint mode, it disappears. So I suppose that's a tiny bug, but it doesn't really make much difference. Okay, so I'll click on the blunderbuss color to make sure that's the active texture. It's the only one in there, so it will be the active texture. 
We've got one other slight issue in here if I zoom into my model. It looks all gray and a bit weird. That's actually because we're in solid mode rather than material preview mode. I'm not sure why they default to that. They should really default to material preview mode. It would make much more sense. Okay, so we are ready to paint, but there's a couple of things I want to talk about first, and that's the importance of your island margins. So don't follow along with this. I'm just going to go to the fill brush here and choose a color such as red, and then fill it in with that color. Okay, so I'll zoom into my texture and we'll see what's going on. You can see that it's going slightly beyond the margins. And that's a good thing. We want the texture paint to go slightly beyond because that will stop any bleed, especially if with the whole texture, when we reduce it from 2K, for an item like this, we might go down to 512 by 512. That will obviously mean that these pixels won't have the same influence. They need to be much further out so when they're reduced, we don't overlap this gray color onto other parts of the model. So we want to increase this sort of spillover that we get here. So it comes out really far, maybe sort of halfway between these two textures. So we don't have any problems. We don't want it too much because it will spill into the other texture and paint on other parts of our model. And that would be annoying. But we do want it a lot more than this for when we reduce our textures when they're ready for game engines. So if I come across to the workspace tools and settings here and I scroll down all the way to the options here, I think you can find the menu up the top here as well just here. You can see the bleed there and the bleed there. So at the moment it's two pixels, so we're going two pixels this way outside of our UVs. We want to turn this up quite high. Now I put on the screen just here the bleed size you want to go for the different texture sizes. We're using 2048 so we need 16 pixels, so I'll turn that to 16. But if you're painting on a smaller texture size you don't need so much bleed. So now let's use this color again and fill watch that bleed expand out to here. So if I zoom out, you can see all these areas are now filled in much wider and we shouldn't have any problem with seeing seams when we go into a game engine. Now, if you're having problems with this and you're going to 16 pixels and it's kind of overlapping each other, you'll need to re-unwrap. That's not really a big issue. I'll undo the two fills that I've done. I'm still on bleed 16, so that's fine. And I can always just go to the UV editing workspace, select my model, and re-unwrap. So unwrap there and just give it a higher margin. So let's go to 0 0.015 and we've got more space between our UVs so we know we're safe. I know from what I've done that 0 0.01 is fine so I'll leave it on 0 0.01 but you can re-unwrap at any time as long as you haven't started painting on your UVs. So make sure your margin, which is sometimes called the padding in other programs, has enough distance. Now this unit number here, I'm not actually sure what it represents, whether it's percentage or something like that, it's not particularly clear because you haven't set the texture size yet when you're unwrapping. It's not to do with the texture size because the texture size can vary. So I wish I could give you more information about what this number actually means, but I can't. I just know that 0.01 is fine for when you're using a 2K texture and painting on it. So back to the texture painting workspace and let's talk about painting. Okay, so we've used the fill brush to fill in the whole object, but we don't actually want to fill in the whole object. So I'll undo that. We want to fill in different areas. Now what you can do is come up to the mode and choose edit mode. And you see how we've got seams here. I'll deselect all with Alt A and press L on certain areas. And down here I can change it to seam and it will only select the seams around there. So I can select this front end, for example. Then I can go back to texture paint mode, press this special button up here, which is paint mask. So when I click that, you can see this goes a lighter color or a lighter tone and now I can just fill that area in at the end. And you can see there we've got our bleed working. It's not going into any other UV areas, so we know we're safe there. But this way of texturing is not actually that great. This may sound weird, but actually what I do at this point is I cut the model up again. That may sound frustrating, but it really isn't that bad. And it's much better to sort of jump between objects and paint rather than trying to isolate these areas by using the paint mask option especially when you've got lots of intricate details like we have kind of in here, it's really hard to paint on them without being able to kind of isolate them and separate them out. So although it sounds strange that I've joined everything together and then I'm breaking it all apart again, it was important that we joined it all together because now all the vertices are sitting on top of each other like they should be. Okay, so I'm back in layout mode and I've changed my reference image so it's shown in perspective mode under the object data there so I can see which areas I need to split up 
and I'm going to select on my gun and go to edit mode. This will be better in x-ray mode so I can select the areas in the background and it's probably easier in face mode as well. So now I can select areas and then press P to separate by selection. And what I'm going to do is select any area that's got a different texture. So this area, this area, I can probably keep these brackets as well on here, but I'll separate these brackets out from this one because they're a different color and it's easier to fill them in. So any area that's got the same color, that's what we're going for. We might separate some of these out because they're a little bit intricate, but I'll time lapse this so you can kind of see what I'm separating. So the glass at the front, for example, P by selection. We can select the whole of this telescopic sights just here and we can do that together because they're the same texture and we'll probably want to paint that at the same time. Some people have pointed out that the sight is actually obscured by the front of the blunderbuss but it is a magic sight so it sort of reflects and bounces and goes over the top it's quite special. Now you might want to use the link option so if we come in here and press L we can select the linked areas there and if I just tap L over the top of this we should be able to find them all. Just double check that you have them all and P to separate by selection. Just be careful not to get any extra bits like this. Use control to deselect areas if necessary. So I'm carefully selecting the wooden handle only here and P by selection and the bolts, I'll do them together. This selection here is all the same color so I can select those together as well, but I'll keep the separate pieces so it's easier to paint those. You should be able to easily see whether it's worked or not because you shouldn't see any dots of faces. So just separating things by texture. Don't worry too much if you get it wrong because you can separate them again later if you need to or join them. Okay, so it's all separated out and we've got this just one object here left. So if I go back to object mode, we should be able to see all these separate objects like this. It's very easy to join them back together, but it is much easier to paint like this. Okay, so I'll go back to my texture painting workspace and I'm ready to texture. Now I've still got the paint mask option on, so I'll turn that off. And I don't know which object I've got highlighted at the moment, so I'll go back into object mode to see that. So control tab, will get this menu up. It's much easier to go to object mode like this. And I've got this object selected here. We'll start with the front, nice big object like that. And then control tab, text paint mode. So we can quickly jump between them like that. Just remember though, that you may still have the paint mask option on, so turn that off. Okay, so we're almost ready for painting. What I like to do though, is to get my reference image in. I'm going to pull this across slightly and down. And instead of using the outliner, I'm going to change it to the image editor and bring in our blunderbuss reference. Obviously you can make this screen a bit bigger if you want. I'll keep it like this for the sake of the viewers. The one thing you will want to do with this, if I come across here, you'll want to press this pin button. Because as soon as I click on this object and go into edit mode or anything like that, it will change this thinking that I want the details of that texture. So if you pin it, it won't change. Okay, so what we're going to do is fill this in with the base colors. So I'll just scroll down a little bit to my color wheel here and I'll choose colors that are similar to what I've got up here. Don't worry too much if they're not precisely the same as I've got here, but you can just look at what I've got here, which is the tone on the side here, light and dark, and then the saturation of how colorful it is. The further out you go, the more saturated it is on this wheel. So I've got a mid-gray there, so this shouldn't change much at all, and it didn't. In fact, it looks like I've got some slight red in there. So I obviously didn't click quite in the middle there, so let's go to our actual color here, and then I can just take out any saturation, and then it won't have any color. Not that it makes a lot of difference there. If you want to store that color, you've got a color palette just here, and we can create a new color palette. And with this color here, if I press the plus sign, it will create a little color palette that I can always select and get back to that color if I need to. It's not really that much different to the rest of it at the moment, but it's fine for now. So we're just getting the base colors in. So control tab, object mode, select my next object, control tab, text paint mode, and let's choose a color for this. Now it's highlighted, so we know we've got this button selected. So we just need to turn that off and let's scroll down and find a sort of orangey type of color, maybe a little bit lighter of tone and maybe a touch more saturated probably somewhere around there let's see what that looks like and it looks okay for the moment it will change a lot when we start painting it but let's add that to our palette as well so we've got all the colors we need here control tab object mode select your next object control tab text paint mode and find a wood color so across to the reds a bit more a little bit darker and we've got a sort of brownie wood color 
I can't fill it in because I've got this selected. Turn that off and fill it in. And we'll keep that color. So I'll add it to my palette and you can see it there. The only other color that I need is for the front of my sites here. So object mode, control tab, text paint mode. And I've made a mistake here. I've separated it incorrectly. That's not a problem. I'm going to control tab into edit mode. Select this outer ring of faces there with Alt left click on one of these lines going across to select a face loop. P to separate by selection. So these are now separate objects. I can then go back into object mode, select these two there and there, and then Control J to join. And now they're one object. Now there is one thing you have to do when you merge objects. Let's go into edit mode, select all and press M. And then you have to merge by distance to make sure that these extra verts are all actually joined. And you can see it's removed 12 vertices, which is the count around here, and they're all one object. It may seem complicated, but at the end, we just select them all, Control J to join, M to merge, and it's done. So you shouldn't have to do this too many times unless you've made a mistake like me. Okay, back into object mode, select this front object here, Control Tab to texture paint mode, and let's fill that in with a sort of bluey, turquoisey color. Let's come across here, up to here, somewhere around there. And I can't fill it in because I've got this button selected here and now I can fill it in. Okay, so I'll time lapse me sort of filling in those base colors. This time I can actually select my color palette to choose that color and fill it in. And you can see the colors that I'm filling in are all over here on our UVs. Okay, so that's all filled in with the base color, nice and simply. Now, when you come to save your work, so file, save as, blunderbuss base textures, and then save, it looks like it's all saved. But when I go to close down, it should give me a warning message. I don't want to do that just in case there's some sort of error, but I haven't saved my image. You can tell I haven't saved my image because it's got a little star next to it here. So you have to actually save this image separately from the blender file. So if I go to file, save as, I'll have to call it Blunderbuss Color 4 because I've done this a few times and then save image. So like I say, this texture is actually separate from the Blender file. So you've got to save it separately. It should be when you go to close Blender that will give you a warning message saying you've got unsaved images. But make sure you save it anyway. That's the best way. Hopefully this isn't too long for you. Well done if you've got this far. But like I say, I'm trying to go into lots of detail so that I don't miss anything. The process may seem long to many people, but it's actually a lot quicker once you get used to these different things. Okay, any questions, comment below. Thanks for all your support, much appreciated. Those that watch an advert, donate, or sign up to my Patreon, thanks very much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.